G'day guys. It's been a little while since we've done a pro video. So. Anyway, we're doing landmarking today. Just me and Dad. We're bringing, well, Dad's currently out checking cows and sheep. He's going to try and bring in the fat lambs. We're going to try and mark them today. They're well overdue to be done. They're going to be uh, a little bit painful to deal with because they'll be a bit big for the cradle. And it makes life just a bit harder handling them when they're bigger. Reason being, if you haven't guessed what I'm about to say, because of wet weather. Well, yeah, wet weather. Currently in the sheep yard, as you can see, looking pretty bloody wet and sloppy. There's been a couple of, well, there's a lame cow and calf in here for a bit and they've sort of made a bit of a mess. There's lame water in some of the yards. The yards behind the shed, which is over there. Wet, very wet. Every paddock is still drenched. It's a bloody joke. <clears throat> We're coming to the end of bloody spring. It'll be summer in a couple of weeks. Or yeah, three or four weeks. And we've had one day where it got to about 28, which was Wednesday. And it was a really nice day. And then straight away after that, rain and just crap weather again. So everything's been delayed. Um, we should have probably had the lambs all marked already, but because of weather, we haven't been able to get them in. Same story as last year. We're gonna get held up with shearing, no doubt. Um, similar situation, it's just too wet to be even contemplating it at the moment. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any good break of weather either. So we're just gonna keep watching watching the weather and hopefully get it done pretty soon because <clears throat> it's sort of running out of time. Um, yeah, so I'm just down here in the yards at the moment setting up. Um, we're gonna use the single cradle today because it's just me and dad, uh, mum and Neeks aren't here to help. So we're gonna do it um, just with the single cradle because we have, well, we're going to buy. We've got it here to borrow. So I've borrowed this from my work and we're probably gonna buy it off them because they're gonna get rid of it. A five cradle carousel uh, marking cradle. Um, yeah, so you can put five lambs in here. It spins around. locks into position so a bit different to ours it's like permanently fixed you can't tip the lambs out like on our one but these just to hold their rear bottom legs and yeah you'd have a group of people um, working here and one person would be doing one thing and you can spin it around and sort of production line the um, process so yeah it should be good so when we mark the main mob of Dooney lambs, we'll probably use this because hopefully we'll have everybody here to help. And it won't be just me and dad. We'll try and set it up and make and see how well it's going to work. It, it should be good. We're going to uh, buy it anyway, even though we're not using it today. But uh, we're just going to use our old single one because there won't be many fat lambs to do. Because um, that mob was only 50 ewes. So there's probably, I don't know how many twins there are and how many we lost, but There'll be around 50 lambs, I suppose. We'll count them up today because um, we don't have any tags either. We can only count what we have and then tag them when we did the second vaccination. So I'll just give you a quick update of what's happening in the shearing shed as well. That's been doing a little bit of work. So last weekend we came in here and had a bit of a tidy up. Got rid of some more junk, which was good. So we got rid of that cupboard that was there and another cupboard that was there as well as some other random stuff that was lying around. Um, but we have acquired chaff cutter up the back now we've had for years but it used to be a mum's stable but now we can't store it in the stable so now it's in here taking up space um dad's done a few little improvements to the shearing shed um, to make life a little bit easier for us so here you guys if you follow along for the shearing and shearing shed work that we've done there's usually a little wall here um he tore it down and cut it in half and he's made a little gate so it's easy for us to get into the um pens to move sheep around, because usually you have to climb through over there, which just lets you into one of the back pens, which is sort of a pain in the ass. Um, so with a door here, it'd be a lot easier. He's gonna put hinges on that and cover it all up so the sheep don't, um, can't like see out in here, and it's sort of, yeah, they don't get scared of going through. So he's done that, which will be a handy little upgrade. Um, we've still got crutchings in there, plus some old wool. Um, that was the good wool that I pulled off. Um, the cartoons we had, there's not much there. That just bundled everything else up, I think, and 
put it into that pack down there. I'll put some into a pack there. So there's not much good stuff that can be sold. and nothing that else. I'll just get burned. Um, the wool press, we still have to weld up a little spacer onto here. Um, so it stays level when it goes down, but it's pretty much right to go. We might just have to top the oil up because it's been leaking. Uh, and then Dad has also put up these boards here to make some... Um, oh, he's going to crack it when I can't think of the name. What do you call them? Bins. That's what they're called. Some bins. So like what we have over there for the pieces and ballys, the two bins, where we store the pieces and ballys, he has made three new um, temporary ones here, um, just with some scrap wood we had lying around here. So this will be for um, different uh, grades of wool. So I think I was about it before, when we have 3AM is our best line of wool. Um, say we had a water stained wool or um, your second line, which wool isn't, the wool isn't as good. He can put them into these bins here and split it up instead of having them all sort of piled up, making a bit of a mess. If they're all in a spot, it's easier to um, store and then easier for us to um, put into the press and bale up when we come to pressing, pressing the bales. So yeah, three new bins there. It takes up a bit more room. Um, we won't have any like area really to store um, our baled wool. So we'll probably have to kick it out the door and put it in the workshop where the John Deere is, Dad was saying maybe, but just to get it out of the shed so we have room and yeah, sort of takes up some of our smoke of area too, so we sit there, sit there, but we'll work it out. We've got a little bit more space now, so that's a good thing. There's still more stuff that could be taken out, that freezer especially, could be taken out and made a lot more room. But um, yeah, that's what's been happening in here, and that's what Dad's been up to. Um, yeah, it's been pretty wet, as I keep saying, and we haven't really been doing a hell of a lot of major jobs, and that's why yeah, it hasn't been much uh, content out. So... We're going to be hopefully back into the swing of it. We're not even contemplating hay at the moment because it's too wet. The oat is like way too high. Um, Dad thinks to us to handle now for our slasher. Uh, I think I said it a while ago, there might be talk of maybe getting uh, Jamie and Simon to cut that for us. But uh, yeah, that's what we're, not what we're doing today. So I'm going to finish setting up the yards, give Dad a hand to get these sheep in when he comes in. And um, then we'll yeah try and mark some lambs and hopefully all goes well. Rightio, just finished um, getting the yards ready for sheep to come in. As you can see, the water lying there, more water lying there in front of us. Um, that's not typical of this time of year for us. Has been the last few years with this bloody La Nina bull crap. But um, yeah, we would not expect to have lying water in the yards at the moment and we definitely wouldn't expect it to be slop. So, yeah, it's not a very good year for sheep work or sheep in general. Um, it's not cold or anything, it's sort of that humidity. It's not really humid, but it's a bit humid, um, which also isn't good because it can um, cause body strike on sheep. I don't know that we've had any yet. We haven't had any real humid days, but hopefully um, we don't get any before we can get their wool off. Um, because yeah, we don't want any body strike on them, it's no good. And um, yeah, it affects the quality of the wool. But it's gonna be, I think the wool will be pretty dirty this year because they've been playing it in the mud. So it won't be amazing. But yeah, there's the rams over there, covered in crap. So I think Dad has got the, yeah, the small mob of fat lambs uh, coming into the paddock just there. So there's like a cow and a couple of cows in there as well. I think the, I think Microdot and um, Marmaduke, the steer and the bull are in that paddock, so I'll have to go over there and stand at the gate and make sure no one goes where they're not meant to. And Dad's on the two-wheeler at the moment. We, uh, we're down a bike, so the quad bike's still having issues from the other week when I looked at it. Um, they're going to take it into town and get it fixed. So I'm no motorbike mechanic and I've sort of had enough of looking at it. So it's got to go into town and get sorted. So Dad's on the old Ag 100 out there in the mud. And mum's actually been using the horse to go around the animals, so letting out her inner stock woman. So she's been out there on the horse checking the cattle and the sheep. So, yeah, wet weather's causing more dramas with all that stuff too.
crackers. Crack is next to you. Righty, so we've got the ewes and lambs in the yards as you saw. Um, now we're gonna uh, draft the ewes from the lambs to separate them. And then we might leave a couple with them just to keep the lambs calm, just it makes it a bit easy handling them. Um, we've got the drench set up because we'll give the lambs a drench. We've got the illustrator, which puts a uh, little rubber ring around the uh, what will become weathers, so the male. Uh, put around their balls so that they drop off. We've got the uh, gas knife, so we use that to cut the tail off. So this is all about what we do for marking. Um, we use the gas knife here, which is a heated knife, and it um, gets really hot, and you chop the tail off with it uh, between the bone joints, a couple of inches down from their uh, rear end, and it will um, seal up the wound as well as um, removing the tail. And then the um, cradles are ready to go. So we'll draft them off first and get it all set up. <clears throat> um, I won't show the full procedure, I've done that before. Um, if you are interested in exactly how we do mark lambs, I did a video last year, I'll put a card up for it and I'll put a link at the end screen as well. Um, if you're interested in seeing how it's done, um, that shows us cutting the tail off, giving them a vaccination and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I can understand some people don't want to see lamb's tails getting cut off, so <laughs> I won't do too much filming of it. But um, yeah, we'll get ready, get it all going. Dad's just going up to get the vaccine because we'll give him a jab as well. And then, yeah, we should be right to rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> 
Molly here. Molly here. Alright, we got all the uh, lambs grafted off. We've got a small pen here now at the moment that are ready to be marked. The rest are in there with a few used to keep them calm. So, we're going to start the process, which I just rattled off before. So, cut the tails off from the drench. Give them a vaccination, and if they're a male, we'll put a rubber ring around their balls. Um, yeah, we're not tagging today because we haven't ordered the um, the tags that we need to put in them because they you have to order them specially in, and they come microchipped um, to track the sheep, and you have to order them specifically for your property, um, and they take a couple of weeks. So we'll just count how many lambs we have, um, and then we'll order all the tags in. And when we do the second vaccination for them, we'll tag them then. So it's not really a drama. Um, and we've still had to count up the other main mob of Dooney lambs when we mark them as well. So we'll order in all the tags at once. So we've just finished up, or we just finished packing up um, all the landmark and stuff. Um, and then we've just finished doing those um, fat lambs. So they're all done and dusted. Um, Dad's gonna have a quick talk about his thoughts on them and uh, he'll give us the final number on how many fat lambs we got this year and what his thoughts on the current situation is with the lambs. So I'll give you over to him. Hey, good day, viewers. Well, as Cam said, we just finished marking our few little fatties. As you can see, we're a couple of helpers down this year on these ones. We give the women folk the day off to go and get on the sauce together, so who knows what's going to happen there. But anyway, a couple of old campaigners soldiered on. And we got the job done in record time. So, um, yeah, they Quite good little lambs, 65 of them, out of about 50, out of about 50 ewes. We might have lost, well, I think I might have picked up three during the lambing, and I don't know whether Ange picked up any or not, but yeah, he's pretty happy with them. Oh, Ramsey's as he's known, he's pretty good at producing twins, and uh, a lot of males came through, which is, good thing because I'll go out nice little fat lamb so yeah I'd say with all the feed we've got been infested with this year um, we should be able to fatten them up pretty quick to a reasonable size and 
get them off to market and get a few dollars for them later on so all in all we're pretty pleased um, we've still got the dooney lambs to do they've been so wet it's sort of a bit hard to get them into the yards when you wanted to but we struggled and got the, these few in today and I don't know whether we're going to get a heap of rain over the next couple of days but uh, if it's fine we might be able to tackle that next weekend and get them done out of the way and might have a couple of extra helpers if they're sobered up by then so uh, yeah anyway that's about all I can say um, as Cam says we'll catch you on the next one oh yeah, so there you go <coughs> so that'll run them um, that little mob out later on today once they've had a bit of a rest in that yard behind the shed um, and you just do a bit more work on the shearing shed today so that's about all that's really happening today it's pretty pretty wet still so not a lot else happening we'll probably we'll hopefully try and do that other mob next week um, depending on the weather but uh, yeah so hopefully you enjoyed the video um, put a link up in the end screen to the uh, landmarking video from last year if you want a more detailed um, explanation as to what we're doing and why we're doing it I'll put that up um, but anyway yeah hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one there